Ready. Play. Takes the ball. Up into the air. Cross court. Backhand by Steph. Backhand by Rude. Forehand by Steph up the line. Cross court by Rude. Forehand by Steph. Backhand by Rude. Forehand by Steph. Backhand by Rude. Slice though. Up the line. Steph. And it's long. And that's it. Casper Rude is finally a ATP 500 champion. Beating <laughs> Stefanos Tsitsipas. 7-5. 6-3 uh, in what can only be described as a quite a straightforwardish match for Rude. The, the big monkey is off his back. He can now no longer get, he can get rid of the title of the 250 King. He is proving it in a bigger stage um, on the clay, as we probably would expect he would do so. Um, on the stadium in on a stadium named after the guy um, after the guys' academy he trains at. Uh, um, is a member at, uh, of course, that being the Rafael Nadal Academy. Wow. Uh, his time certainly has come. Lads, thoughts? Yeah, amazing performance, I would say. You know, a really good turnaround from bouncing back from a tough loss last week in the, in the finals where, you know, we were really starting to doubt Kaspar's ability to play these big finals. But today he really stepped up, I think, mentally as well, but also physically he seemed to be have the, the right game plan. Sitsipas not playing his best tennis, certainly that's for sure, but that had a lot to do with Casper's performance today, especially the games that he played to break back and then the 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 finish and how he was just able to carry that momentum in the second set never really felt in doubt. So just you know, just really good stuff overall. And I guess does this kind of change the way we look at, you know, Roland Garros or do we just kind of, you know, put both Steph and Casper, whatever order you want, in tier two going into the next Big tournaments. Good question. That um, I'll let Van, uh, Damien on, uh, ask, answer first of all, and I'll give my uh, give my take. I mean, good on Casper for delivering on like the the aggression that he has been um, like sort of associated with this year. Uh, he didn't do that in the Monte Carlo final. He did today. So performing in a bigger final is certainly quite huge for him. I still don't think he deserves to be in the same tier as well at least at the same level of a tier as Tsitsipas at Rangaros potentially, just because his ability to beat the top guys is probably slightly smaller, than, slightly weaker than, than Steph's. Then again, I mean, of course, Tsitsipas for the last years has also been struggling against all these Djokovic's, Alcaraz's, Sinners and, uh, and stuff. So um, still the top three who actually wasn't at this event, the top three who actually hasn't started their clay season all that well these are the main favorites to me but um yeah it's just fantastic for casper to deliver in a big final especially after what happened in monte carlo last week no i would i would tend to agree i mean i think as we were saying Fanch, at the beginning of the show you would put rude you would put sits pass in that sort of tier two s category um you know the tier one that being that sinner alcaraz and djokovic as ones you would you would not be surprised if they won the if they won the french open when it comes to when it comes to rude and when it comes to sits pass yeah you would certainly put them in that second tier um i would put jointly almost uh, because given that rude is very good at being able to work his way through draws uh, um, especially when it comes to Roland Garros, where he's a two-time finalist and, you know, he's defending final points this year around as well. Um, so certainly would have them in that sort of tier two, along with Zarev, um, just because Zarev is, is good on the surface and at the bigger events, Zarev does, does, does show up, um, mm. uh, especially on the clay courts. So um, I, cer I certainly would have them there. I mean, we would have to see one of these two players potentially winning Madrid or Rome, probably looking at Rome. Um, as I said, when you said Casper Rude, the big monkey, I thought that was a bit harsh. Then he finished the sentence with off his back. Okay, uh, that's taking me off the taking my kill to that. Um, uh, yeah, I think we'd have to see one of these two players win potentially Rome, beating the likes of Sinner, Alcaraz, and Djokovic along the way for them to be a discussion about moving them any higher than the sort of tier two that we would probably put them in at the moment. Yeah. yeah, 
I, I second that. I think uh, Madrid, Rome, if Alcaraz plays both, if Sinner plays both, if Djokovic shows up in Rome with good form, they will still be the main favorites going into Ron Garros just because if um, Rudolf Tsitsipas face um, one of these three in the Ron Garros final, we probably won't be trusting them too much. But uh, they have so far been the two best players of the clay season, no doubt about it. I mean, no one really comes into the conversation, maybe other than Yannick Sinner, if he does get injured in the third set in Monte Carlo. But uh, yeah, it's been a fabulous start. Such an intense clay season for Casper as well, right? I mean, Estor in semi, uh, final in Monte Carlo, title in Barcelona. If he goes deep in Madrid or Rome, I don't think he's going to show up in Geneva this time. <laughs> And um, basically, um, yeah, it looks like it might be that sort of a swing for Casper, where he just plays every single week, goes deep every single week. But, well, that's what he's been doing this year. Well, we know that he'll take the entirety of the grass court season off, barring a rocking up rocking up to Wimbledon <laughs> for his, to collect his first round paycheck. Uh, and that will Last year he won a match, right? He, he match. did win a match because I think he played uh, Albert Ramos Vinolas, another clay court. <laughs> no, no, that was against <laughs> Hoinski. Hoinski played Ramos Vinolas for sure. I don't remember who Ruth played. I mean, second round, obviously, Liam Brody, the man, the myth, the legend, the friend of the show. But the first round? It, I, I swear it was a clay court specialist like him. He played in the first I, round. Must be, because otherwise he wouldn't have won, right? Let me, let me uh, look that up. If somebody else can wrap it on a minute, let me that, look that up. Uh, who was it? It was like someone, like, what, was it a Brit? No, it wasn't a Brit. No, no. It was, it it was be, definitely oh, was it? Here we are. It was something low-key. Uh, Lawrence, uh, oh, Lawrence, Lawrence. Lawrence. Loro yeah. Locoli was in the Wimbledon main draw last year? Yeah. yeah, what he, won a, he, beat, he took a set off route. No way he called it. Did, did he make it as a lucky loser or something? I must have. No, I mean, he wasn't that high in the rankings. Did he really qualify for Wimbledon last year? I do not remember that in the slightest. I mean, obviously, he was a drawn guard, but wow, that's that's pretty insane. I wouldn't, yeah, he qualified. Oh, yeah, beating Michael Moe in five sets in the final round. No, but okay, that's that's insane. I mean, Loron Locoli is currently like on the verge of falling out of the top 400. Um, but yeah, okay. So if he draws Loron Locoli again in the first round, he's going to win it. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Well, um, so... be told, that was one of the best matches I've seen Casper play in a, in a big match. So one, against Lo against Loron Locoli uh, in, in the first round, Wimbledon? Yeah. <laughs> Or maybe no, against Liam Brody because Liam year. Brody played top ten tennis on the day. Oh my gosh! No, no, don't even. No, no. You, don't, don't even you meant that. Today, right? <laughs> you meant today, right? I love Liam Brody, but no, just no. I think he'd probably call you crazy too. <laughs> uh, of course, I mean, I, I, I wasn't serious. <laughs> although he did, didn't he beat Diego Schwartzman the year before that too? Or do I have that? He wrong? did. He did. Yeah. Yeah, he, he did. did. Okay. So. Yeah, he shows up at Wimbledon and grass like you would expect. He started showing up at Wimbledon that year, like 2022. Before then, he had he had like a 40%, well, less, like a 30% win rate on grass. He only really started playing anything on it the last couple of seasons. But yeah. Um, yeah, but, but I was saying, it's uh, this is this is a time of the year which in which Rude will maximize as much as possible. I think, as you say, given the fact that he's won this title now, you know, he's gone deep last three weeks he's going to do both madrid and rome you know will he rock up to geneva a place he's won a cut on a couple of occasions um to, to really play every single week of the clay court season um as he as he has done at the moment before the big one which is roland garros we of course know that he's he's down also when we do the post wimbledon swing he's down to play uh to go back to uh borstad uh, and we wouldn't be surprised if he choose to, if he chose to go to kitzbuel or um uh, or, or or Umag as well, probably Kits. No, actually, Kits Bihel, he's probably going to play, right? Yeah, that's a, that's the second week of a uh, um, of post clay swing or the post clay. Uh, yeah, yeah post because you wanna swing. you wanna play something before the Olympics. I think yeah. he's already think signed up. He's also going to be playing uh, some of those tournaments, right? Or at least one, if not two. Where he's well, in Toronto. I mean, he might sign up for them, but I think he's only going to play one. There's no way he goes for the full thing, especially if he goes deep at Wimbledon. And uh, yeah, Ghosty, that's John. And there was also Jack there in a in a black shirt, I think. They I got to see two of the Brody box. 
I know it's a little bit of an off, to off topic, but I think we are starting to see some of those July clay tournaments already announcing some of their players. I mean, Sinner's announced for Borstad along with uh, Rublev. Uh, Rude and Zareva, and I believe Sitsipas as well, are confirmed for Hamburg. Uh, Demonor's going to um, Gustad. Um, so there's certainly a lot of these players are already committing to their committing to their pre-Olympic build-up. Yeah, but I mean, there's no way if Sinner goes deep at Wimbledon, there's no way he plays both events and then mm -hmm. Olympics. Like, no. Uh, but uh, anyway, of course, topic for that will be uh, much uh, topic. The time for that discussion will be much, much later. Apparently, mm -hmm. Coventry City is not doing too hot either. Oh, it's zero free. Uh, ah. Yeah, it's all going. They're probably not mounting a comeback here. Yeah, who's awaiting in the final? Is it already? known or it's uh manchester city i believe <laughs> so, all right it's looking like it's a repeat of the fa cup from last year Stefan, it's, it's gonna be stefanos Tsitsipas, you know that 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 sort of uh at, at atp 500 finals that, that that's some, yeah, something yeah. like that um is atp weekly tomorrow probably yeah we haven't set it up does, yet does, but does, in your opinion is that atp finals the the 500 finals thing do, is that really like something super important yeah. like narratively or is it like who cares because he has yeah. three masters in an atp final like do we just ignore that it's total think? bs it's total bs what what you just okay. said i just i also mentioned on the stuttgart stream earlier that like for root this is actually a proper milestone to win a title over 250 level for city pass <laughs> <laughs> Come on, if you have three ATP thousands and an ATP finals title, you don't care if you've won a 500. It, it, it's, mm. it's a made up stat, but it's a funny one. And especially now that he's 0 and 11, it's going to just get shared even more. And uh, yeah, not to be predictive, it's not a made up stat, it's an actual stat, but it does, it's, an, but it's a stat that doesn't really have much relevance. Its relevance right. is made up, yes, it, it's, its relevance it is. is made up. Yeah. But he'll win one. Impact on he'll... him or its relevance is also if both these guys let's say lose early in Madrid because of fatigue or just you know having played so many won so many matches in a row, is it, does that really change your perception going into them for the clay season? No. Or is it that if they actually lose early in Madrid, it's fine because they have more time for Rome and Rome is more similar to RG anyway in terms of the conditions? I wouldn't be too concerned if they went out early in Madrid. I think the concerns yeah. would the only the only way I would yeah. be concerned is if they went out early in Rome. Then there'd be maybe some some issues. I agree. I would say that both the like both events really like regardless of how they perform in Madrid and Rome, they're going to be among that six seven favorites group for Rand Garros. Like it would be yeah. very hard for them to get knocked off that right now. Yeah. Like I, I think if Casper or Steph lose early in Rome, then they have so much time to prepare for Paris as well. Uh, yeah, I don't true. think it would bother them that much. Yeah. But anyway, a good run for both of them. They each picked up a title. They're both, the they've certainly both at this stage of the season marked themselves out as standout performers of the swing. Yeah. Yep. And for Sitsipas, he really changed the entire narrative of his season, right? I mean, he was 25 in the race, like when Monte Carlo started, and now he's... He's what five or six, maybe five. So like that's still, yeah. Like now he's he's really established himself again. It's amazing, amazing what a what a what a thirteen hundred point boost can do to your ranking. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Shall we wrap this up? Allow people to go watch the trophy ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Sound good. Well, thank you, everyone, who has uh, logged in for this stream. As you can probably guess, uh, tomorrow there is no tennis. Oh, the uh, um, it is all um, qualifiers and challenger things, which I'm sure Damien will be watching. Um, so, but uh, Madrid um, starts off, or for the women, starts on Tuesday, and for the men, starts on Wednesday. Um, for and of course, it's the big 12 day event. So, get ready for seeing Madrid quite a lot on your screen for the next week and a bit, or at least two weeks from now. Uh, and yeah, um, thanks, Vance, and thanks, Damien, all for uh, being on, on board. And uh, remember, if you haven't already, hit the like button and to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed already. Uh, that'd be brilliant. Uh, and yeah, see you later on. Yep. See ya. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.